friends, how are you doing today? I am doing well and welcome to my channel. If you have been watching my channel, you know that I have been doing my horror movie collection and I try to put one out maybe once every other week because they take such a long time to edit and put together. But I know you don't care about that because you just want to watch the show. But I believe that I am on shelf one, two, three, shelf four, pot two. That's what this would be called if I was in my right mind, which I am not. But I am going to share with you the addition to my horror collection and i i still have another two more shelves left of horror collection stuff actually two more shelves and a bunch of random stuff that i will show at the end to group that all together and you will see everything that i have everything that i have horror Woo. okay so these are in no particular order whatsoever i'll try to keep the genres and genre, the genres are all horror i'll try to keep the uh the not genres the the franchises together. I'll try to keep them all together as I go along. So work with me here. Let's watch. Please comment below. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Help me out with my ag the, ag the algorithms. Ag algorithms. My ag hit that like button and we will begin. Here we go. First movie is a movie called had a little dust on it. Ants. Ants. What can I say about Ants, man? I love me some critter killing movies. And Ants is a 80s movie that I probably watched a half dozen times on the Creature Double Feature. And guess what it's about? Ants, yes. Ants are coming. Ants are killing. And this is actually a pretty good movie. I mean, I I, I enjoy these. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the, the total cover, the total, the total cover, the total uh, title of this is Ants. The picnic is ruined, or maybe it just maybe it is just ants. I think picnic is ruined is probably a catchphrase, but it has Suzanne Summers and Robert Fox, uh, Fo uh, Fo Foxworth in it, like Robert Foxworth. Like that's a big deal. I don't know Suzanne Summers though from Three's Company. This is a good movie if you like those type of critter type killing movies, like ants and and birds and flies and jaws and stuff like that. You will like the ants movie. This was one of them I ended up picking up. I think it was in a two pack somewhere. Absolutely love it. it. It definitely, I think I paid like $5 for I got my money's worth on this one because Ants is a great horror movie. And then we have The Hitcher. Hitcher is still sealed. I saw The Hitcher back in the day and I haven't cared to watch it since. But then I went out and I bought The Hitcher 2. Not sealed. And guess what these are about? A hitchhiker. A hitchhiker who wants to kill you. And if I remember correctly, the first one was better than the second one. Did they both have C. Thomas Howell in them? Uh, C. Thomas Howell. C. Thomas. Yes, they do. They both have C. Thomas Howell. This one has Jake Busey in it, though. Does not have Rudger Hauer. So this would probably be the go-to movie. And this little thing right here is driving me crazy. I'm going to rip that off. I throw it over there. So the Hitcher 1 and the Hitcher 2. Salem's Lot. Uh... Salem's Lot. This was a Stephen King adaptation movie. And I bought this movie because I was told that Salem's Lot is um, supposedly a great Stephen King movie, number one. And then the next thing was is that they used the original looking vampire from Nosferatu, okay? And he's got like that Nosferatu feel about it. And, and and then somebody else said that, that that there's a scene in this where like the kid comes to the window and they could not get the the sound of this kid out of his head and, and, and I'll tell you right now I, I I watched it and and I don't know I I, I it was a made for TV movie so it was uh, I ordered Return to Salem's Lot I'm hoping that one will be even better that's coming out soon from uh, I, I think. Uh, I want to say uh, something archives or whatever. Warner Archives or one of them things. Anyway, Salem's Lot. It's probably somebody's favorite. Not mine. Uh, Fear.com. Don't remember it. Don't remember it. That's all I have to say about that. And it has Stephen Dorff in it. Fear.com. Then we have... Oh, let me get these in the... I told you I'd give you the order of the franchise. Let me do that. Fright Night. Fright Night is an awesome horror movie if you if you do not have fright night have not seen the original fright night it's a must see for horror fans it this is this is just memories great horror movie you'll enjoy if you like vampire movies and you want to see a good vampire movie fright night the original one okay the original one I mean, i'm being very clear to that clear to that clear on that and then we had fright night 2 
yeah, I uh, I wish I had a Blu-ray release. That's what I got to say about that. And it probably is, it probably is really, really, I just remember Fright Night 1 more than Fright Night 2. Uh, but I, if, when it comes out on Blu-ray, I will upgrade it. Why? Because I got Fright Night 1 and I'd rather have the original Fright Night 2. And it does also star as Malcolm, uh, Malcolm McDowell, Roddy McDowell. Um, Roddy McDowell, yeah, I said it right. right I'm looking, Roddy McDowell, which was the original, uh, guy from, from the original Fright Night. So this is probably decent. I just don't, I just don't recall it that well. That's what I got to say about that. I'm trying to put these in some kind of order here. So when I scan them in, I'll be able to put them back. All right, then we have Fright Night the Remake. I bought it on DVD and then I upgraded the Blu-ray. Now, when I when I made very clear that you have to watch Fright Night the original one, that's because Fright Night the original one is the best one. This wasn't bad. This was good. I, I like the character uh, that plays Peter Vincent. You know, not bad in the first one, but I like the character here. I think he's the guy from Doctor Who. Um, it it was it was it was good. It was it was. Worth a watch. It was decent. It's a two disc set, Blu-ray, DVD. I, I don't. I bought it just to upgrade it. I enjoyed it. Uh, this one, Fright Night Part Two, was part of the Fright Night Part One remake. Part Two. This went direct to DVD. This one, I don't remember because it probably wasn't that great. Okay. Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Ask me why I bought this. Why? Because it's Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Who doesn't want a, a Blu-ray or a DVD that's called Hollywood? Matter of fact, I'm, I never even watched this. I'm going to upgrade the Blu-ray. Never even watching it just because it's called Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. It's a horror movie called Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. And that's why you buy it to put it into your, your collection is because... So you can say you got it. Like... I, I mean, I, how, who knows? I'm going to walk down the street one day and somebody going to come up to me and go, hey, you're, you're a big, you're that guy. You're that guy on YouTube, right? You collect all these things. Do you have Hollywood chainsaw hookers? Heck yeah, I do. I got Hollywood chainsaw hookers. Do you? No? I got it. That, that's, that's, that's why. That's, that's about it. I don't remember. I, I don't think I even watched it. Um, Joyride. Joyride was good. Uh, Steven, Steven Zan, Zane, Zan, Zan, Paul Walker. Um, guy chases him through the whole movie in a truck and wants to kill him. Is it Candyman and, uh, Candy, Candy, Candy Cane? Candy Cane? Is it Candy Cane or ca Candy Cane? It's Candy Cane. This is Rusty, Rusty Nails. Is it Rusty Nails and Candy Cane? Do I still got it? Comment below if I got that right. I, I believe it's Candy Cane and Rusty... Candy, candy Cane. This is Rusty Nails. I think it was Candy Cane and Rusty Nails. And then uh, Joyride Part 2 came out. And I have Joyride Part 3. It's not here. It's back in storage somewhere. But yeah, there is a Joyride Part 3. I got one. I got two. They were good. Trucks following them, trying to kill them. Part 1 was the best. They probably could have stopped there and I, my life would have been complete. Um, this is a movie called Frankenstein, starring Robert De Niro. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is still sealed, but it's still sealed because I had the VHS of it. I bought this and I haven't got around to seeing it since I upgraded to the DVD. This was a really, really good adaptation of the Frankenstein movie. I mean, it, it, Robert De Niro, De Niro did a great job as Frankenstein in this movie. If you have not seen Robert De Niro as Frankenstein, this is, okay, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein if you have not seen this, this is this is one you should see. I remember watching this over and over and over again on VHS. Probably so many times that I that's why I haven't watched it on on DVD since then. And I think I probably will throw this in maybe this weekend because I haven't seen it in a long time. It flows so well, and De Niro plays a lovable Frankenstein. I mean, he's he's got that scary Frankenstein thing going on, but he's still got this. You kind of feel for him, almost like a King Kong type thing all right so yeah frankenstein uh i'm gonna get these confused and maybe, maybe you can help me along with this now okay these are my black christmas movies okay black christmas i believe had three uh redos okay uh, two two okay you got the original and you had two remakes if i, if I remember correctly I, I could be wrong and if i am wrong please to tell me that I'm wrong because I want to make sure I got them all and I need I think I need to upgrade this last one but I'm not sure if it's the same one I already got so first one I have here is a Scream Factory Black Christmas okay and if I open this up here 
like like you do with the Scream Factory. You have the new cover art, but then you open up over here and you have the the original cover art like you would see when you went to the video stores, video stores back in the day. Yeah. Um yeah. Now, so we got Black Christmas. Which Black Christmas is a bunch of sorority girls and they're being hunted by this these guys. Um that's pretty much what it's about. So, this is the original one. Now, this is where I get a little bit lost here. Then we have Black... Now, is it different because it's Black Xmas? Okay, it says Black Xmas, but te technically, isn't it Black Christmas? Still a Black... I, I don't know. I, I'm confused about... I, I keep these all together, and maybe I should watch this, but I'm looking at the back of it, and it has the same thing going on as the... First one, and this one right here, which is the newest one. This is Black Christmas. So, is Black Christmas and Black Xmas supposed to be a remake in this this franchise? I don't know. I'm I'm having a hard time with this one, and I don't know if I can. I don't know if they have this on Blu-ray. I don't know if I should be upgrading it. I'm confused. I've been confused. I got to look it up. Yeah, I mean, I'm asking you guys to comment because I want to start a little conversation here. But personally, I, I I mean, I'm sure I could look it up and figure it out. But it's mind blowing. I mean, I mean, te technically, they just changed it to Xmas. But it, Xmas is Christmas. So is this Black Christmas and Black Xmas or Black Christmas and Black Christmas? Comment below if you know what I'm talking about, because I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm going with the flow here. All right. The Orphan. Awesome movie. Awesome. Love it. My kids love it. Awesome. I, I ain't even, you know, if you've never seen it, I'm not going to tell you a thing about it. Go in it blind. You're going to love it. This uh, adult, okay, not for the kiddies. It's not a kiddie movie, even though it's called The Orphan, okay? This is definitely an adult Rated R movie, horror movie, okay? So don't watch it with the kids until you watch it first and they say, hey, you know, do I, is it okay for me to watch it with my kids? Or do I feel comfortable when we watch it? That's what I do. But uh, this was a great movie, and I'm not giving anything away. The Orphan, okay? It's 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 really, really good. And I hear there's going to be an Orphan part too. Looking forward to that. A uh, movie called The Voices. I ended up picking this up after watching it on, I believe, Netflix. And it stars Ryan Reynolds and pretty much the dogs that tell him to kill people. That's what this movie's all about. His dog and his cat, he, he's having um, an issue where he's actually hearing voices of his, his pets and they're telling him to go out and kill. It's a dark, black comedy, horror, and I, I enjoyed it, so I had to pick it up on Blu-ray. And it stars Ryan Reynolds, which is Deadpool, my favorite my favorite uh, Marvel superstar there. Um Stephen King's Cat's Eye. What a great movie. Is this a... Uh, nope, it's not. It's just a, uh, it's just a Warner Bros. Cat's Eye. Um, one story with three stories in it. It's kind of like a... Okay, so it's... Uh, 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 it's not like Creepshow, okay? It's, I was going to say, it's kind of like Creepshow because it's got three stories in one, but it's not because it's one story, but the cat go travels, and every time he travels to a certain place, something happens to a certain person, so it's kind of telling three different stories but then wraps all back around again to the original story so it is really one st am i making am i confusing everybody am i confusing everybody if i'm confusing you hit that subscribe button right now uh, let, let me see how many people ask, i i, I confuse i'm confusing right now just, just stop right now hit the sub and then i'll know how many people i just confused yeah it, it, it wraps around it wraps around and it's uh it's it's good it's a good movie with a good soundtrack um and it'll stick in your head. You'll you'll have you'll have you'll have this movie. You'll watch this movie, and you won't forget it. And it's, there's a part in the, at the end of the movie with a, with a troll. So, per, it has adult. It's rated PG thirteen. It has adult elements in it. But if I remember as a kid, I would actually skip past the first two parts and go right to the end with with the um the troll that lives in the wall. And, and I, I would I watched that part over and over again because it was it was so good. And it's got a young Drew Barrymore. In it. I mean, who doesn't love a young Drew Barrymore? Valentine Scream Factory release. I hadn't seen it in a long time. Picked it up, watched it. It was good. Um, Valentine. I'm hearing some, somebody's blowing the horn outside. Hopefully, it ain't for me because I am not going out there. All right. This is my. Okay, so we have 
The Shining. And yes, I bought it on 4K. I have not watched it on 4K, but it does come with a Blu-ray and a digital code, which a digital code is useless for me. But um, I bought it on Blu-ray because, uh, I mean, 4K, because it's one of my favorite horror movies. It's, one of the, it's a classic horror movie from back in the day that I've watched over and over and over again since I was like five years old. And it never gets old every single time I watch it. Okay, <laughs> Had a Beetlejuice moment there for a second. And then they came out with the, the sequel years later called Dr. Sleep or sequel. Yeah, sequel because it's the little boy grown up or whatever. Um, it was all right. This, this one was all right. Classic. Okay. Classic. Cabin Fever. This one is the Eli Roth remake. He did Cabin Fever. Then he released Cabin Fever. The remake. By the same guy years later. Hmm. Gotta do a little research on that one. But hey, if people get stuck in a cabin, there's a disease going on, and that's what's going on there. Alrighty then. Okay. I'm gonna splice that because that alrighty then had nothing to do with what I was thinking in my head as I was trying to say it. I was trying to get something, a point across in, in my head, and it, I was thinking about if people keep driving by and blowing horns and, and hitting the gas and everything. I don't know. Alright. This is my Jeepers Creepers franchise. Listen, I love Jeepers Creepers. I love the Jeepers Creepers character. Uh, as far as the director, the writer, whatever, I, I don't care. I'm not. I'm not getting in the middle of that mess. Okay, people. People suck. Okay, that's that. Some people just, just, yeah. You know what I mean? There's just some disgusting human beings out there in this world. Wow, I'm having a. A vision of ice cream and cheeseburgers. Hmm. All right. So this is my Jeepers Creepers franchise. Okay, we have Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers, Cre Jeepers Creepers 2. And the very hard to get sought after Jeepers Creepers 3. Because Jeepers Creepers was going through this Jeepers Creepers situation where people were like, let's get rid of that director and let's let's move the franchise on. Because people legitimately love this Jeepers Creepers character. They, they do. I, I love him. I think I think it's an actual, actual it's a great character. And I, I got action figures of him and, and I got all the movies. I had them all on DVD. My kids have all watched these movies with me. I, I, I like the Jeepers Creepers franchise. I like the Jeepers Creepers stories. I mean... I think I think he's charismatic and funny in different ways and he doesn't even talk. But um and then that Jeepers Creepers song gets stuck in your head after you watch it. Jeepers Creep it's it, it it's a great trilogy. I mean I, I wouldn't say so much the I wouldn't maybe I shouldn't call it a trilogy because part one and part two are really good. Part three, eh, you can kind of tell going downhills. But I hear that, that it was sold to another uh company, so hopefully they'll pick it all up and straighten out the, the situation that they're having there. All right, next franchise here. Let me see if I can get these in order. All right, we have Exorcist The Beginning. Still Fractory Sealed. Because I heard that this was a terrible movie. But I needed it to go with my Exorcist movie collection. And this is The Exorcist. And this one is the extended director's cut and the original theatrical cut. That's what you gotta get if you are a fan of horror movies. You gotta get the extended cut. You gotta get the director's cut. You gotta get the theatrical cut. You gotta get every single cut you possibly can because that's what a, a good horror collector does. And this one has everything that I needed at the time. I, I don't think it has a 4K uh, version yet, but it does come with the extended cut, the original cut, and special features beyond compren com oh, I can't say it comprehension. Uh, William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist and Talk to the Devil uh, documentary on here. So you do get some stuff on here, and it is on separate discs, two disc sets. I guess two discs. It actually might be three disc sets, if I remember correctly. I think they really did this one up, and that's why I was kind of sold on this. Yep. One, two, three discs. Broken case. So yeah, you get one, two, and you get three. You get three discs set here, and it has the Extended cut, and then you get the actual cut and the other disc, and you get a bonus disc with those special features on there. So there's no comp 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 compression situation here. Which some people tell me that 
Blu-ray compression doesn't make a big deal because there's so much memory on a Blu-ray. But I don't know. I, I personally feel like each disc should have its own love, have its own place. I mean, don't you? Don't you want your own place? Don't you want to have your own individuality? Well, my discs do too. And gosh darn it, they did it with this Exorcist. And then Exorcist 2, Scream Factory, the... I never say this right. The Heretic. The Heretic. It was good. People didn't people didn't really care for it. And then Exorcist 3, I thought was really good. And it stars the guy that played the voice of uh um Chucky. Uh, am I gonna say his name right? Am I gonna look it up in the back here and get it right? Brad Dorf. I'm not even gonna look it up. I, yeah, I, I always try to con confirm. But yeah. Uh uh Jesus George C. Scott. Brad Dorf. I, I did say it right. It was good. I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And here we go. All right. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I dropped it. Hang on. All right. Carrie. This is the Scream Factory version of it with a whole bunch of extra features. Carrie, of course, telekinesis girl. Uh, don't mess with her because she's going to kill everybody. She's going to kill you all because she got a crazy mother who don't want her to show her, her dirty pillows to nobody. And just she's had enough. And she, she she's in love with curly-headed guy from Greatest American Hero. And John Travolta's walking around somewhere with the girl from Greece. The girl from Greece. I don't know. I don't get them too confused. I don't think it's the girl from Greece. It's some other girl. It looks like the girl from Greece. But anyway, you mess with her and you dump pig blood on your head, her head, you're probably going to die. Carrie. Great movie. And then they released Carrie 2. Carrie 2 and that, The Rage. Carrie 2. I love this movie. I loved it. Screen Factory released it as a two-pack with the, the made-for-TV version of Carrie. And this one, it is out, out of print and going for over $100. But I am going to get my hands on that Blu-ray. I promise you. But I will not pay $100 for it. I will pay. I, I, got, I got $50 in my head. That's what I got in my head for that. I think that's what it's worth, and that's what I'm going to get it for. Because either they're going to re-release this thing eventually. So, you know, when it comes to to um, buying out-of-print stuff, you, you got to really have a love and a passion for it. I enjoy this movie, but I don't enjoy it $100 worth. Um, but this was really good. This this is kind of like a... If you have never seen Carrie... If you have never seen... If you have never seen Carrie 1, you could watch The Rage Carrie 2, and you would be absolutely fine. Uh, they don't really, they, they tell like the same story, the similarities uh, from Carrie 1 and Carrie 2 are almost exactly the same. Carrie 2 more updated as a newer times, that makes sense to you? Newer times, like, the other one was like set in like the 70s or whatever, and this one was set in like the year 2000, 1990s, ah, whatever. Um, scary stories to tell, did I say right, to tell in a dot, do you, if you know what this is, this is a, this was a children's slash teen book that they made into a movie that was um, a dramatic pause there because it was good, but it could have been better. That's what I got to say about that. I mean, I know a lot of people really, really love this movie. And if you are a big fan of the books, then you were like, yeah, I'm excited that this came out. I went to go see this in a drive-in and I had read the stories prior and I, I just think that they could have did more with it. I mean, this, this was like a glorified goosebumps is what i'll call this one and 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 i just think that they did a great job with the goosebumps giving them all these individual stories what they tried to do they tried to cram all the stories onto one almost like a goosebumps the movie okay so when i say goosebumps i'm talking about goosebumps the the tv series where each story had its individual half an hour or hour long show this one and the goosebump movies they kind of combine everything together to tell a story and they throw the characters in from the movie uh from, from the front sorry from the books I, don't, I just think they could have did better. I, I People loved it. I think that they could have did better. Uh, the Human Centipede. Oh, sorry. The Human Centipede, um, the complete sequence. One, two, and three. Well, this box is pretty cool because it has pot one in it, has pot two in it in color, and pot three. Now, I've watched Human Centipede one. I had no, you know, they say it was grotesque. They they say you're gonna be messed up. You say, I, I, I don't know. I maybe something's wrong with me because I found some of it to be a little odd and some to be a little comical and some to be a little like, oh, you know what I mean. And then part two, I haven't watched in this 
in this version, okay? And I and part three either. But I have watched both of them in fast forward. Does that make sense to you? I I I, I was like, you know what? I I, I was good with Zoom Centipede one. And I hear Human Centipede 2 is even more grotesque and worse and, and for shock value than part 1. And then part 3, they said, was kind of messed up because the last, like, 10 minutes of the movie is when you actually get to see the centipede. It's the Human Centipede movies, man. If you, you've seen South Park, they make fun of it. If you, you know what this is. They, they take... This guy wants to... back. I guess back in Germany or whatever, they, they would sew your head to people's butts and... And try to feed you through one thing to another thing to, and, uh, it, it's it's a movie. It's that's all I can say about that. You know, I was on this this grotesque movie kick, and I was like, "You and Centipede so big, I gotta have You and Centipede in my horror collection. It's gotta be in my collection." And a lot of people really love the Human Centipede movies. The only thing I really liked about the Human Centipede was that I thought I thought the first one was all right. Second one, I liked the whole deal with the you know that it's it's a uh, a fan of the movie that's trying to redo the movie and make his own human centipede. And then part three was like something that had nothing to do with either one. So the human centipede movies. All right. Next movie. May. Never watched it. I have it in my collection. Had it, I've had this in my collection for probably about 15, 16 years. And I have yet to watch the movie May. If it's good and I shop on it, tell me. May. Okay, this one is long out of print, and it is one of me and my kids' favorite go-to horror thriller type movies, and it's so okay. It's it was a it was two made for TV movies. I believe it came out Lifetime. If I if I remember correctly, I've seen these both on Lifetime, and this has been out of print, and it's going for quite a bit of money on eBay. So I was happy that I I bought it just because I was a fan to begin with. And then for some reason it went out of print and I was just lucky that I had it. You know, I just wasn't, it wasn't one I ran out to go get. I actually bought this not knowing what it was because it was a nap video for sale movie. And it's Cabin by the Lake 1 and The Return to Cabin by the Lake, both starring Judd Nelson. I bought these because I'm a fan of Judd Nelson. I liked him in all of the, I liked him The Breakfast Club, um, Blue City. I mean, I, I like Judd Nelson movies. Uh, so I bought this movie and then... Um, if I remember correctly, I bought it, sat on it for a while, and then it came on Lifetime. I watched, I'm like, oh, uh, I wonder if I, I, I want to get that because this is a great movie, you know? And I went and checked in my collection. I just so happened that I did have it because it was probably one of these buy three, get one free on that video, whatever. And this has part one and part two on it, but it, it's pretty, it's actually pretty good made for TV movies. It's about this guy that's trying to create this, um, garden underwater of these dead girls. And he's, he's abducting girls. And he's swimming out. To, he takes the boat out to the middle of the lake. He puts on his divers stuff there. And he goes down to the bottom of the water. And he weighs them down with rocks. And he dresses them up and decorates them like this beautiful underwater garden. It's a great concept. It's a great movie. Judd Nelson was great. This, this was good. I, I mean, if you have never seen Cabin by the Lake, I'm not going to tell you go out and get it. Because I don't even, I don't, I don't think you can stream it and to buy it. This is a DVD. It's not released in Blu-ray. It's very, very expensive for, for what it is. So how are you going to watch it? I don't know. You probably know how to do it. All right. Then we have Interview with a Vampire. Still sealed. I've seen this back in the day. I didn't need to reopen it because if you've seen Interview with a Vampire, number one, I took this as a chick flick vampire movie. This was, a, ooh, it's Brad Pitt. Ooh, it's Tom Cruise. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I don't know. I just... I paid $3 for this just to put into my collection because Interview with a Vampire was actually a decent movie, but it's not my go-to vampire movie. I would watch Lost Boys 100 times over this movie. Uh, I'd watch Fright Night 100 times over this movie. It's it, To me, it was just too long and drawn out. Uh, I know a lot of people are big fans of the movie Dracula also, which I do have Dracula in my collection also, but it's another one that was just too long. And and, and I, I like my vampires to get right to the point. And these are... I'll call these my politically correct vampire movies, which Interview with a Vampire and Dracula were like the the PC vampire movies. Like they they went by the right by the book, you know what I mean? Where Lost Boys and they kind of go off the off the rails. I like when they go off the rails. This one was, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like it, it yeah. Like I said, there's gonna be fans, gonna be people that love it, some people that hate it, but 
I'm just like, I, I seen it once and I could put it in my, my bank of things I've seen, but I did not want to run out and see. I'll put the Lost Boys in and I'll really enjoy that. Uh, Countdown. Uh, another one. Great newer horror movie. I, a lot of, like, this is another one. A lot of people didn't like or whatever, but, you know, you open this up, the countdown clock goes on, you got so much time to, before you die. That's, I think they, they've used that story more than once in a couple of other movies. Um, this is a. This is nothing. It's not an A. It's not. It's a Miramax release of the Faculty. This was good. Got a Josh Josh Hotnet in it, and Josh Hotnet is cool because Josh not, Hotnet always plays Josh Hotnet. If he's in Halloween H two O, he's Josh Hotnet. If he's in uh uh Forty Days of Nights, so there's a forty. Is it Forty Days of Nights? Forty Days of is it Forty Days of Nights? Am I thinking the right guy? Yeah, is it Josh Hotnet? He's always the same guy. I don't know. He just always plays this. He always plays Josh Hotnet. He's always got the messed up hair, and he's. So to me, I don't know. This this was actually really good. The the faculties turn into aliens, and he's slinging some kind of homemade drug at home. And the homemade drug that he's using is the only thing that he could use that 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 kills the the aliens that are taking over the faculty. The faculty's all going nuts. This was really good. It's got the guy in it from uh, Terminator as the gym teacher. Um, got the right movie, right? Yeah. Okay, I think so. Hey, right? Yeah, that's right. In a long day. Okay. Needful Things. Stephen King movie. I had to get it for my Stephen King collection. This is a Kino release. Am I correct? Kino release, yes. Um, Stephen King uh, made this movie. It's about... Um, well, he didn't make this movie. He wrote the book. And a lot of movies that, that get, go from his book to a movie, he doesn't even care for. He, I, he really... I don't. I think he, I watched a documentary where he didn't even care for The Shining. I think he didn't like the way that the Stanley Kubrick put together The Shining. So this is an adapted movie from a Stephen King book and it's about these people that go into this little curio shop and they have things that they need but if you get things from the devil that you need you're going to pay a price and that's what this movie is all about it's like things just keep going wrong because this devilish character is giving them things that they need not necessarily things that they want what they need or they think that they need that if that makes any sense to you all right the Birds. The Birds. I paid $5 for it from Big Lots. I haven't opened up yet. Why? Because I have the uh, Alfred Hitchcock box set, which has the Birds in it. And that's a DVD. This was the Blu-ray, so I was upgrading it because the Birds is a classic. That's all I got to say about that one. All right. Wes Craven's The Summer of Fear. Summer of Fear is one of Wes Craven's earlier movies. I bought this because... It's one of Wes Craven's earlier movies. It says, Master of Horror, Wes Craven returns with a 1978 cult classic. Haven't watched it yet. And it does star Linda Blair. So you take Linda Blair, you take Wes Craven, you got me spending money. That's what I got to say about that one. And we have this, look at this slender, cool little thing there. I bought this, this was on a counter of, I want to say, uh, the Ocean State Job Lot. Ocean State Job Lot. Yes, this was on a counter. And it's a movie called Ghost in the Machine. And it stars that girl from Indiana Jones. Does this have her name on the back of this? Um, is it just... No? No? <sighs> Here we go again. No. Um, wow. Karen Allen? Yes, Karen Allen. Raised the Lost Ark and Starman. Um, this kid has... Okay, the computer is possessed by a ghost and it's messing everything up this was actually really good i couldn't find it in any other kind of format i couldn't find it well any kind of any other form besides this slender cheap low budget you know it's it's, it's kind of funny because it's a slender cheap little case but it, all, it has a book inside it has the disc and it's everything that you would want from a dvd without having the big dvd case and it was a good movie so if you ever seen ghost in the machine you know what i'm talking about Listen, these are a lot of movies here, and I, I want to thank you for sticking around and going through this with me because we have one, two, three, four, maybe, maybe about ten more left. So hang on there. Uh, while you're hanging on there, you can hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, which helps me out. So we have Cujo, Stephen King movie, dog, gets bit by a bat, if I remember correctly. Is it a bat? Bites him in the nose. He goes rabid, and he ends up chasing this mother and son 
where they get locked into the car. And of course, the son's got a breathing problem and they spend most of the time in this hot burning car with this killer dog outside just frothing and full of blood and just... Ah. Cujo. Sometimes they come back. Haven't seen this in years. Bikers slash um, greasers. Something happens to them and they come back. Okay. We have The Descent and The Descent 2. If you are claustrophobic, you will have a hard time with these movies, but they are very, very fun, enjoyable movies about these people that are going cave dwelling and there are creatures in the cave. Clown House. And yes, this is the original Clown House. This is the factory real DVD release of Clown House. How do I know? I have watched so many YouTube videos to find out if I had the authentic Clown House because I wanted the 100% authentic Clown House. Did I pay a lot of money for this? Eh. Okay, I paid eh. for a DVD. I want to say it was around $50. I bought it a long time ago. But I'll tell you right now, there's a couple of, of you know, there's a lot of bootlegs of this thing out there. Like people, uh, they, they, they want this movie. People want this movie. People are fans of this movie. This movie is really, really good. I mean, it's 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 a decent clown killer movie with a lot of cheese to it, okay? And I didn't know anything about how rare this movie was or, or the controversy with the writer slash director of this movie when I purchased it. That's not the reason why I bought it. I bought it because it was hard to get and it was a clown killer clown movie and I love killer clown movies. But now after the controversy and everything, that just makes the, the, the cost, the price of this thing go go through the roof. I don't look at it for that. I look at it for the movie. I'm not getting into the, the, the politics of it or the, the sickness of whatever people do in their life. Like I said, it's not up to me to judge. I, I like the movie. I watch movies. That's what I do. I watch movies. I judge movies. Okay, I watch... If if the direct, if this movie was terrible, then I would say the director is a terrible director or a terrible writer. But the movie was good. And I had to get the original. Took a little while. A little hunt. Like I said, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why the price was crazy. I had seen this a long time ago on something and I remembered it and then when I saw the cover I was like oh yeah that's 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 the one that's the movie but yeah they're very very sought after a lot a lot of bootlegs out there if you find the original one grab it hopefully somebody gives it a blu-ray love um sinister and sinister 2 right sinister says 2 um yeah, this guy's watching videos and people are getting killed. They were good. They were good. And we're winding down. We're, we're getting, getting to the last little stack of movies. And once again, I would like to thank you for sitting here all this time and watching me. And if you have seen things that you like, then... You can comment below. If you've seen things that I'm missing, please comment below. If you have any uh, suggestions for my collection, comment below. I, li I like the comments. I like to read them. I read them, and I try to re uh, respond to all of them. So consider yourself special. All right. Swap Thing. Great movie I watched back in the 80s. This is a, a love story. This is a horror love story. And then I went out and bought Swap Thing 2, the MBD release. Why? Because... Swamp Thing Run is a, Swamp Thing Run is a Scream Factory release. Swamp Thing Two is an MVD release. You get a ton of extra features in it. Swamp Thing, Swamp Thing, the original one, I had to have watched so many times when I was a kid. This thing was on all the time on uh, Cinemax, Showtime, HBO, and then later on on regular TV on the edited version on Channel Fifty Six, Channel Sixty Four. These this thing was on so much. I don't know how many times I watched Swamp Thing, and then I remember they released a um. After Swamp Thing was released, they came out with a toy called Mangalore. And Mangalore was like one of my favorite toys. That thing was the coolest thing because it, it, it was a doll. Not, well, it was an action figure about this big. And you could rip them apart. And this was what the commercial said. You could rip them apart and you could stick them back together. They looked just like Swamp Thing. And um, the problem was that when you ripped them apart, he never did really go back together again the right way. And then eventually he would not be sticky anymore. And then you were just left with a, an, a leg or an arm or a head. So they're a very sought after toy if you can get one brand new. Very, very expensive. I don't have one yet. I've been searching for years, but Mangalore was his name, and it was awesome. I, matter of fact, I think that was the, I think that was the commercial. It was like, it's the same. Mangalore is his name. But, okay, anyway, getting off track there. But Swamp Thing, great movie. 
the Return of Swamp thing, I if I remember correctly, this was a, like a comedy type thing. I think it has Heather, Heather, yeah, Heather Locklear in it, and it was more of a comedy than this one was more of a scientist gets blown up, he becomes a swamp thing, you feel bad for him, he falls in love with the Adrian Bardo. Is Adrian Bardo? Yeah, I'm just gonna say it's Adrian Bardo because yeah, I'm not gonna find it back here. Am I? Uh, yeah, it is. Adrian Barbo. Bar Bar Am I saying it wrong? Barbo. 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 Yeah. Okay. And this one has had a lock. This one, like I said, was more of a comedy. Um, but they're, they're, they're good. And I classify them as horror movies or sci fi ish horror type movies. Um, my favorite horror movie, hands down, Silver Bullet. I love. I own this by uh, this version. I own this, the the Scream Factory version, um, and I I have them both on my shelf. Usually, when I buy a, an upgrade of, to a different kind of version, like if I go from a regular to Scream Factory, I usually put the other one away. But my Scream Factory, I don't want to play with. I don't want to put it in. And this one is just as good, except the special features are different on this one than they are on the other one. So this is my go to when I want to watch Silver Bullet. But this is this this if you want to see a great horror movie, I'm talking great. This is the one to go at. Hands down, one of my favorite movies of all time. If not, you know, I'm not gonna say favorite horror movie because this is my one of my favorite movies of all time. I have watched this so many times. I can put this in right now and watch it and love it just as much now as the day I watched it back in the day. I just think that Gary Busey is great. Corey Haim is great. This movie is just it's it's great. It's 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 this is a flawless horror movie. My if I had one. I, this isn't even a gripe. This is a gripe that other people have, and I'm going to share the gripe with you, is they say that the, the werewolf isn't scary. The werewolf looks like a big teddy bear, and that's fine with me because you, you see the werewolf bits and pieces. It's, it's more of a story. The story is what sells it to me because I'll tell you, I would love to be this character... Well, maybe not. Okay, so let me get this straight. I wouldn't want to be his character in real life. Like, I wouldn't want to be, uh, you know, crippled in a wheelchair and, and driving a silver bullet and everything like that and being chased by werewolves. But when I immerse myself in, in the movie and I, I, I feel the characters, you know what I mean? This is one of the guys that I, I just, I go to. I mean, I just think that the, the brother-sister characters and, and the, it's, it's a great, great horror movie. To me, hands down, the best horror movie or movie I've probably ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of movies, so that's going to tell you something about Silver Bullet. And if you have not seen Silver Bullet, do me a favor. Stream it, download it, find it, get it, DVD, whatever. If you are a horror fan and have not seen Silver Bullet, there is, there is a problem. There is definitely a problem. And if you think there's a problem with me for saying that, then comment below. And we'll talk about it. All right. Stephen King's Thinner. I just upgraded this not too long ago. This is a olive film release. I upgraded it because I watched uh, I watched my DVD the other day, and I'm like, oh, the quality of this isn't that great. And this is actually a really good movie. It's about this heavy guy that uh, he um, betrays this this gypsies, a bunch of gypsies, and they go, you dinner, and then he spends the rest of the movie just wasting away or whatever. But he's trying to get the curse taken off of him that he was put on it this was really good I, I i a lot of people once again did not care for this movie i really like this movie so dinner. okay we have the thing classic okay this is just a classic this is a john john carpenter classic okay it's i love it because this is one of those movies that Okay, now tell me if I'm a little weird. If you've ever done this before, I don't know about you. In the wintertime, I open a win I, I shut the door, I open the windows, and I turn the heat off, and I get it ice cold in this house. And I, 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 I am talking freezing cold. Piles of blankets on top of me, you know, blankets on over my head, blankets on my shoulders, freezing, freezing, freezing. I put in this this movie, and I'll tell you what a what a what a great feel. I'll tell you, it just it it gives you. This is what's coming the crazy stuff that I do, but it, it puts me in the same kind of element as the characters. I mean, it's a snowstorm going on in this movie, and there's this thing that's taking over different people and animals, and they got you don't know who's the thing and who's not the thing, and they go through the whole movie now wondering who the thing is, and and it, it's good. Stars Kurt, Kurt Russell. This was a, this was it is a great great horror movie. Forever will be a classic. And then they did the remake of The Thing. What do I say about that? 
Listen, some some movies just don't need remakes. That's that's what I gotta say. I mean, not that it was it wasn't, not that it was bad. It's just that the thing is a great movie, and it, it will always be a great movie. So there's no real need to remake it. You know, it's, it's hot candy. This was good. This was good. This is one of those uh, I spit on your grave. You mess with me, I'm gonna come back and get you type movies. It's about this guy that's he's he's a. a well, I don't know if classify him as a pedophile or he's a, definitely a, a stalker, a pedophile. Um, a, um, he preys on young girls. And this young girl, she knows what he's doing. And he ain't going to get away with it. This, this was good. This was a good, edgier seat, thriller, horror I don't know if you classify it so much as horror as much as it's more of like a uh, hostile. I put it in the same categories like a hostel or I spit on your grave or a um. What's the other one there? Uh, spit on your grave, hostel. Maybe I could just leave it at that and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You probably do. Um, it's 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 a revenge movie. It's a revenge movie done very very well. And the 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 girl in this thing, uh, Ellen is it Ellen Page? It's gotta be Ellen Page. Um, amazing. I mean, sh acting in this movie is is unbelievable. The, the guy in it's from uh, The Conjuring. He does a great job. It, 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 this was just so well done, and it almost slipped me by. I mean, I actually, some somebody recommended this to me. I picked it up on on the DVD. I actually put the DVD in a crate, stuck the crate in my closet, and it sat there for years. And then I started watching YouTube videos. Somebody recommended it or whatever, and I and I was like, oh, maybe I'll pick that up. And I was like, I don't feel like going to get the crate. That's buried in the in the closet. I, I'll just order the Blu-ray because I know I got it on DVD. I'll order the Blu-ray, and it was cheap. Like I think you can get this pretty. I'm pretty sure you can get this on eBay right now if you wanted to, used or new, for under seven dollars. This is a good movie. Not a kids movie. Definitely not a kids movie. Not not even a movie for for like squeamish people. There's a scene in here and it make you a little squeamish. This is good. Want to see a good revenge movie? Hot candy. Uh, Resident Evil. This is the box set collection or whatever you want to call it and it has uh resident evil resident evil apocalypse resident evil extinction resident evil afterlife resident evil retribution and resident evil the final chapter i loved now when i first got my playstation resident evil was one of the first games i got and i used to play that game all the time remember, if you guys remember what i remember looking for that that ribbon the dang ribbon so you can save your game you had to in the first ever um, well, maybe I shouldn't say first ever because I'm not, I'm not a video game buff, but the, when I got the original PlayStation, the one with the gray one with the lid that flipped down and everything, this was one of the games I got. And in order to save the game, you had to find this ribbon for the, for the, um, typewriter. I think it was a typewriter. If I remember correctly, it has been a long, long time. Um, and you had to find this thing in order to save the game or else you were, you were out of luck. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that game back in the day and, the first Resident Evil I thought was really good. I, a great zombie movie. I mean, well, and it, it gives you that, that video game feel. It's got the characters from the video game. Uh, the Apocalypse one was really good. They they were, they all went, actually, I'd say all the way up to Afterlife. And then they, I, to me, I don't know. I kind of felt like I lost my, my, uh, my thing for them. Maybe it's because I have not played a Resident Evil game since the first movie. And I could kind of understand part one and part two and maybe part three because they had the same similar characters and the storyline was still kind of flowing and it still kind of went with the first video game. So I still understood it. But then after that, maybe I needed to stop buying new video games or playing new video games, which was never going to happen. So I didn't really click with it. But I do love, uh, what's her face there? What's, what's her face? What's her face? What's her name uh, that plays? Uh, wow. Okay. It's like a whole video of me going, wow, uh, okay. Um, I'm not going to look it up. I think she's a great actress, and I really enjoy her in all the movies she's done. I think she was, if I remember correctly, she's the one from uh, The Sixth Element. The Fifth Element? Sixth Element. What, what, I got an extra element there. The Fifth Element. Sixth Element. I got two more movies, my friends, and then we'll call it a day. All right. And we have something wicked this way comes. This never got a Blu-ray release. This is one of another one of my favorite horror thriller kids movies. I would put this over a uh, Goosebumps movie any day. This is a um, 
it's a movie about these two kids that go to a carnival that happens at night and they got a carousel that if it goes forward it makes you older if it goes in reverse it makes you younger the, the carnival is run by the devil uh it only opens up at night time and they want these kids because they know the secret of the carnival and it's it's good is this is a good movie For some reason it has not gotten a blu-ray release yet i have no idea why i'll, I'll be honest with you the 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 DVD is a little rough. I mean, I, I have two versions of this on DVD. I was hoping that maybe the second DVD would be, because it came out after, would be better than the first one. But actually, the second one was even worse than the first one. It, it's just very grainy. Uh, there's a lot of dock elements and stuff. I really wish somebody would take this thing, clean it up, and give it some some Blu-ray love. I, I probably never get some 4K, but but Blu-ray love would make me really, really happy. Th this, this is one of my favorite movies and the reason why I bought it multiple times, I'm always, I some some movies I buy them, I buy multiple of them. I have this fear that I'm going to scratch it or drop it or lose it or something's going to happen to it where I'm not going to be able to watch it again. And I have not seen this movie aired on TV or streamed on anything for for years. This used to be on Disney uh, when they were trying to sell Disney back in the '90s or no, sorry, back in the '80s. Uh, when they were trying to sell the Disney Channel or whatever, I think it was the eighties. It might be early night. I might be. I might be early nineties. I'm mean, aging myself, messing myself up here. But this was part of the free preview, and that's the only time I ever seen this on anything. And and it was a Disney owned thing, so I don't even think this. I don't think this is on the Disney Channel. If it is, comment below. I could be wrong, and if it is, check it out because you're gonna love it. All right, last movie, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sitting here. For this amount of time, and listen to me ramble on, because there, there has been some points within this whole thing where I'm looking at you, at well, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at, I'm looking at a, a camera, and I'm realizing I'm talking to myself. Talk, uh, somebody watching me? I hope, I hope you are. And if you are watching me, you know, you know what to do. Um, this is a double pack of visiting hours and bad dreams, and I want to end off with this. By saying Bad Dreams was the only movie in my life, besides The Shining, that truly freaked me out to the point where I didn't want nothing to do with this movie. I didn't want nothing to do with it. It stars, um, is it, is it Rudger Howard? No, it's not Rudger Howard. Who's in Bad Dreams? Let me see. I hope that this it does this thing here where it tells me what it is. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Secret leader, Richard Lynch. Okay, it's not Rudger Howell. Sorry. Richard Lynch from Death Sport. I don't know anything about no Death Sport, but Richard Lynch is, is freaky as heck in this dang thing. I'll tell you right now, he plays this head of a cult, and he's like, if you, if, if you, uh, if you kill me, it's because you love me. And right there, I was running out the theater. I was like, ah, okay, listen. I don't. I ain't love you. I don't want to kill you. I don't want to watch your movie. I want out of here. I we. I went to go see this with my grandmother and my uncle. I jetted out of this movie. I I was kicking myself in the butt. I was running out so fast. I was like, no, we'll go see anything else. We ended up walking into going to see Bluxy Blues. We walked out of this movie. Went to go see Bluxy Blues. I didn't even know what Bluxy Blues was, but it was better than this. And then we left there. We we're like, well, listen, we were in ten minutes of the movie, and I and if I remember correctly, we we did one of these things where we were like. Um, um, we didn't think it was, uh, suitable for my grandmother to watch or whatever. Meanwhile, I was scared to death. I was like, no, no, no. I mean, it opens up with this guy and he's got this cult and he's trying to get them to, uh, all kill themselves. And a fire starts, he ends up burning himself to death or whatever. And there's like one sole survivor of the cult and she didn't really want to be in the cult to begin with. And he spends the rest of the movie trying to kill her in different ways like he's like visions and he shows up and it's a... i know that after the fact because this was one of my i need to overcome movies okay this was i i need to watch this movie because it wasn't really as bad as what i thought it was i mean i must have been probably 10 maybe 11 when i saw this movie and i was like was it really as bad as i remember it being as a, as a child i mean can i put this in now and can i can i face my fear and can i watch this now, now visiting hours let me just throw out there this that was just came with the thing that was just a bonus um i didn't really care i don't even think i've watched it to tell you the truth i can't remember visit i i did watch it 
don't remember it, so I don't even care. I bought it for Bad Dreams, and this this movie literally messed me up. I mean, and it, and it's not even a scary movie. It's 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 about a cult, and I think to this day I still have problems with cult type movies. I have problems with movies that that depict cults. I mean, I I, I usually pass on them. I mean, I I just don't care for them, and I think it has to do with the whole. You know, my brain wrapping around the the traumatic experience wrapped around this movie there, and, and I didn't watch the whole movie. I remember it was me and my uncle sitting there, and it's like, if if you if you kill me, it's because you love me. And we were gone. That's that's as far as I got. And that's in the beginning of the movie. That's like maybe ten minutes into the movie. I was like, I, I had enough, and we'll go see uh, uh, Matthew Broderick in, in in a military movie or whatever. And that's what happened. Um, but I went back and faced my fears, and I gotta tell you, it's 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 a, it's decent. It's a good, it's a good movie. It's 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 something. It's good. I mean, I you get older, you go back. It's good for you to face your fears and realize that it's stupid for you. I was it was stupid for me to be as scared as I was in this movie because there's nothing scary in this movie. I mean, I, I watched it again, and as much as I wanted to be scared and, and be afraid and everything. And I, and when I got to that part there, like, if, if, if you kill me, it's because you love me. I was like, am I going to make it past that? And I was like, ah. So I am going to end this video with that movie. I am going to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sitting here all this time and listen to me talk. If you like what you saw, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of these movies and I will continue on in my next video, which you guys... I guess you guys like when I do this. In the next shelf video, I will have Predators, I Spit on Your Grave, um, Legend, Deep Blue Sea, The Grudge, The Grudge, Deep Blue Sea, The Grudge. What else we got over here? Hansel and Gretel. Um, a lot of Scarecrow movies. Different kind of killer Scarecrow movies. Teeth. Uh, Ed Gaines. A lot, a lot of random stuff. There's a lot. This, this next one's gonna be a. This one was a long one, only because it's, it's less franchises and more randomness. You know, the more random we get, I have to explain each individual movies. Well, maybe I don't. You know, um, like I said, that person did suggest back in the day that I should just show my shelf. Well, what fun is that? I don't get to share with you. I don't get to tell you my stories, and you don't get to comment on how ridiculous I am. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you later.